your uh, association with us over 40 years or so has been your mutual belief with us in, in the virtues of the free market. And you've been a great champion of the free market, and we've always valued that uh, part of your life, the uh, dedication to trying to free up the market. Uh, one is we worked on getting rid of these control boards. The one uh, of many pieces of outstanding business, but the big one that you mentioned today was the fuel and petrol control. Uh, what's the way forward? How can we break this sort of Neanderthal that we still have in South Africa, where the rest of the world now has retail competition in fuel and we still sit with a, a sort of old apartheid strategic industry dinosaur. That's exactly right. Mr. Mandela, when he first came in, said to me when I got to know him with the Olympics that I was mm. working on, that he was very keen to get a free market in petrol. Mm. But then he was talked out of it by his people because they have a whole department, I mentioned a whole building, mm. controlling, controlling the, the petrol situation. And then the government make regular income out of taxation. Mm. As the petrol price goes up, the taxes go up, the road the tax goes up, etc. And I think the financial people, and I, I know from talking to Mr. Emanuel, I spoke to him a few times, he said, it's such a rich source of income to us mm. that we don't want to lose control of that. It's one of the fundamental reasons. Mm. Now, the other one is uh, we had this monstrous stifling red tape under apartheid, we had about a decade of relaxation after 1994 mm -hmm. where they were actively cutting red tape, liberalizing control boards, prices, mm -hmm. uh, even privatizing, although the word was never used, it was called restructuring and commercializing and right. corporatizing and so on. And uh, But now we seem to be going back. There seems to be a new deluge of controls and regulations. Do you, do you, uh, do, do, what do you think about that? And why is it? And what can we do to reverse the tide? Well, I think that Mr. Manuel with his development policy was a good, was a good thing, mm -hmm. which the government say they have embraced. Mm -hmm. But one doesn't see enough, enough activity of actually mm -hmm. cutting red tape and getting into that. Mm -hmm. There's no question that we had a lot of things changed immediately for those first four or five years. Mm. We need the same sort of spring cleaning now. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> I just believe that Mr. Zuma or whoever comes after him, they, they should tap some of the, the huge resources of people that I've seen in this country, mm. young people, mm. and bring them into government. Yes. We, we're not bringing enough talented young people into government. Mm. Now the this sort of uh, hostility and, and suspicion towards business. Mm. People say they must be trust built and I always ask, well, what do they not trust? Who do they not trust? Mm. And what, do, what does this mean? What do they mean by trust? And this uh, distance, this gulf that's emerged between government and business, do, do you have a view on how to bridge that? I, my only view on the subject, I know mean, there is contact of by chambers of commerce and so on, but I think that if I was now in Mr. Zuma's position, I would like to meet with four or five businessmen myself every month. Because I remember so distinctly meeting with Mr. De Klerk in 1984, mm. 82, when we didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. It gave me such hope talking to him and hearing what his view was in the future. Mm which he couldn't quite express at that time because he wasn't in power. Now, if Mr. Zuma would call in businessmen from all sides on a regular basis, mm. instead of an official cabinet meeting, he has these meetings and hear people talk about red tape or what should be changed. Mm. And if he then took a lot of that back to his cabinet and said, right boys, this is what we're going to do mm. today. Mm. It needs that leadership from the top. I know myself when I meet with people and they say we were upset about this and we're upset about that. I can do something about it as head of my business mm. by just cutting the red tape and getting a decision made. I, th I think that Mandela did a lot of that. He was very restrictive yes. of it yes. and made them feel their views counted. Mm. And I think Mr. Zuma is too much involved with with all these department department heads and there are more and more department heads 
it's getting a little tough hitting. Mm. Um, I just would love to see a leader say, I want to really lead and, and make sure this country mm. is carefully run, we get in our taxes, taxes, we ensure we hammer people who get away without paying taxes, and I've got to cut red tape and be as efficient as I possibly can. Mm. And he could get so much good advice from us. Mm. That's really where it comes from, leadership for it. One of the distinctive characteristics about you has been your optimism about the country, your passion about the country, uh, your loyalty to the country, the fact that somehow all of your family have stayed here and don't seem to have any desire to leave. And yet there's so much negativism uh, from you know, both black and white communities. Those aren't, of course, the only two, there are others. But uh, there seems to be a growing suspicion, a growing hostility, and a growing negativism from the black side, people saying nothing has changed, from the white side saying they're wanting to restrict and plunder now. I agree with you. In fact, I did a column last week in Business Day in which I listed all of the positives and the good news. And I'm just amazed that the people don't see it. There's this view that everything's going wrong, which it's not. Now, how do you keep your optimism up, which, you've, which you're astounding at, and at your age? At no time do you seem to lose passion and enthusiasm and, and think it's time to move on. Because, because I, if, if I sat at home, and it's one of the reasons I don't <laughs> got a computer, I see so many older people spending their whole life playing with their computer mm. and not going out. I get out a lot, I meet so many young people, that's what I said earlier. It's the young people that I meet at, at Phipps in Cape Town or Durban or wherever that gives me an enormous amount of hope. And then when I look at what really has achieved, what we have achieved, whether it's in housing, whether it's in education, we have achieved a hell of a lot. You mentioned that in your article. And there was a paper I read recently with all, all the areas of where we have changed since 1994. Mm. But there's still so much to be done, and overriding everything is that feeling of, well, we're trying to save and be enthusiastic, but there's too much corruption in government. Now, if, if the leader of government could absolutely get across that we're really going to root it out, they're human beings and there will always be corruption, but I'm going to root it out. And I keep having the optimism and feeling that Either he's going to do it or somebody else, like Emmanuel was, was doing it in many ways. I think the chances of this country going forward are so much stronger than it's going backwards. But we do have a problem if we don't get across to the emerging young people that this country is improving. We could have, all, we could have awful problems. But when I think back to 66 and 67, when all my friends were immigrating, mm. it's just gloom and doom. Mm. And we thank God stayed. Um, I wouldn't have changed that decision for all the world. That's one of the reasons I've remained optimistic. Mm. But it does need government to literally stop having so many departments and so many, in my opinion, too many cabinet ministers. Mm. And if the leader of this government would get out and talk to various people and say, oh, that's a good idea, I'm going to damn do it. Mm. We could change the attitude in this country, particularly, and young people are crying out for it. They're not crying to crying out to be, become terrorists, mm. and let's let's destroy the whole country, but it's not helping us enough. They want to build. There's a huge middle class developing, but we need leadership from the government to nurture it. Thank you again. Thank you for a well-earned award and for gracing us with your presence and a fabulous presentation, which everyone enjoyed. The turnout really enjoy was great. Yes, absolutely. I hope so. It was wonderful. I think that it was personal. It was your experience, your story, uh, and most people wouldn't have got to read your books to to get it there. This was uh, from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Many thanks.